This in the Gospel of John is the calling of the disciples, right? If you look at this in a Bible, the first heading, the heading you're going to see right here above verse 29 is probably the first disciples or something along that line. Jesus calls his first disciples and it's not like any other calling that we've seen before, right? This is not like the calling out of Mark or out of Matthew, which we'll get to later this year. But here in John, we see the first thing out of Jesus' mouth is a question. Right? There's no arguing with John about whether or not John should baptize him. There's no, there's no miracles. There's no healing of people. There's no changing of water to wine. There's Jesus walking along the shore and John the Baptist saying, this is the one who is going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. This is the one who is going to do things that God has foretold. And as he says this, two of John's disciples decide they're going to follow Jesus. And Jesus is just walking down the road and all of a sudden he turns around and he sees these two guys following him. And he says, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? It's actually a good question. What are you looking for? You came here this morning for something. Some of you were drugged here by your parents. Or your spouse. Or your kids. But you're here for something. What are you looking for? Maybe that's not the best question. Maybe Jesus wasn't asking disciples, what are you looking for? Maybe it was more, what are you seeking? Or to drill down even deeper, what do you need? Not what do you want, but what do you need? Right? And it's that time of year where we're doing New Year's resolutions. How many of you have a New Year resolution? Only a couple hands. How many of you that are brave enough to raise your hand have already broken your New Year's resolution? <laughs> right? We, we, we all need to get in shape and we all need to, to do better at something and we all need to do things the right way, right? Well, I, I need to tell you that round is a shape, so it's okay. You are in shape. You may not be healthy, but you're in shape. Right? We have all these things that we need, right? We need to get healthier. We need these clothes. We need the right phone. We need the right technology. We need the right insert whatever it is here and somebody out there will sell it to you, right? We've all seen the ads. We all know that they're willing and ready. When we come and say, this is what I need, they're ready to give it to us or sell it to us. Because that's what the world is. It's a quick fix kind of thing. You've got a problem and I can settle it for you. You've got an issue, I can help you with that. I can give you an elixir that's going to straighten you right up. Right? I can give you a pair of pants that makes you look like you're in shape even when you're not. I can sell you a phone that will call people before you even know you need to call them. Right? Jesus said to the disciples, what do you need? And they said to him, what did they say? It's in the reading. Where are you staying? Jesus said to them, what are you looking for? And they said, Rabbi, where are you staying? And Jesus doesn't answer the question. In the normal Jesus fashion, he doesn't give an answer to the question that was asked to him. But yet he says something else. Because if he would have answered the question, it would have been something like, well, I'm staying at the Holiday Inn down by the seashore. And if you guys want, you can come down and stay with me for a while. Or I'm staying with my cousin across town. He's got a nice little two-room ranch that I'm uh, going to squat in for a while. Right? Jesus, where are you staying? Maybe not a best translation of what the disciples actually asked him. And that's why Jesus didn't give them a specific place that he was staying. 
As you see, that question is not really where are you staying, but that question is more, Jesus, where are you dwelling? Or where are you abiding? These are words we don't use anymore, right? A dwelling is a home, but a dwelling is a place where people dwell where they stay, where they abide, where they remain. The disciples asked Jesus, where are you going to be so that we can come and be with you? Right? And again, Jesus still doesn't just say, well, this is where I'm going to be. He says to them, come and see. Jesus offered to these two disciples who had followed John and had heard about him an invitation. He offered them an invitation to come and to see where I am dwelling. Come and see where I am abiding. Come and be with me. Because whatever you're looking for, whatever you're seeking, whatever it is you think you need, I might have it for you. Actually, I do have it for you. But I'm not going to tell you what it is because you don't need to know that. All you need to do is come and see. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. To go out and to invite others to come and see. And if we invite others to come and see, what are they going to come and see? What do we have to offer that other places out there don't. Have an answer? Forget all oh, that's a good one. Did you guys get it? Did you hear that over there? Can you say it louder? Say it louder. Forgiveness. Right? This is a place that offers forgiveness. What else do we have? That, that other people that out there don't have. We have well, you can get food and shelter other places. I can go to a restaurant and get food. I can get shelter at a house. Right? Hey, my daughter's in the back because I preached last night at St. John's in Marion. So she knows the answer I'm looking for. You all are a little bit more responsive than they were. I ask questions and they just... <laughs> So I actually have to prompt them, which I will here in a moment. But I, I like that forgiveness. We, we are a place that offers forgiveness. The church, the body of Christ, is a place that offers welcome and forgiveness to those, right? You can go to the Y and you can get fit. You can go to the to restaurants and get food. You can go to um, places and get shelter. But what do we have that the world doesn't have, that the world needs, that this place can offer? Compassion. Compassion. That's another good one. Love. love. We love other places too. I don't want to say that we we do kind of. I would say we do have the corner on the market on love because God is love. But you get love other places too. You can also get compassion other places. You can probably get forgiveness other places too. Thankfulness. Thankfulness. You can hear God's word. You can hear that a lot too. They have Bible. Jesus. Who said that? Jesus. You get a gold star. <laughs> the there you go. What do we have that the world doesn't have? Jesus. Jesus. And that's exactly who invited you to come here. It was Jesus that said, come and see. And he invited you to come in. It was Jesus who said, come and see what's happening. Come and see who's going to get healed. Come and see who's going to hear from the word of God. Come and see who's going to feel love. Come and see what's going to happen. He's invited us to come. Now are we willing to come and be with Jesus? And go and tell others to come and see. Are we ready to accept that invitation.